Sorry, could I uh, just ask a question quickly for yeah. to Jack, Tim? Yeah. Yes, you... let's go, go. Oh, okay. um, you said you felt a calling, and we all feel a calling, and sometimes when things pop into your head, it's yes. so perfect, it's like it's been planted there. Do you think yeah. we have a hive mind? Is there anything to suggest we have a hive mind? Oh, absolutely, might... yes, of course we have a hive mind. That's, oh yeah, okay, let me get it, yeah, 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 okay, good, but let's see, am I getting it? Wait a minute, what are you doing? What am I, okay, yeah. I have mine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, there's my pen. EPR signaling. Okay. Uh, explains, explains uh, not only consciousness, this explains all the paranormal. Paranormal, paranormal. Ugh. Normal, you know, telepathy, you know, the whole explain, yeah. And the hive mind. Yes, I mean, we're getting, yeah, I, I mean, channeling, I, channeling is real. By the way, EPR signaling does not happen in quantum mechanics. This is you know, QM forbids. The bids EPR signaling. Okay, but uh, but PQM allows it. Let me make it an allows EPR signaling. And it's PQM action reaction reaction. as explained by Sutherland, 2015. Just go to the archive. But it's the same way, in the same way, special relativity, relativity forbids gravity, forbids, forbids gravity. See, it's, it's an analogy. I'm making an analogy here. It, gravity is not possible to understand in special relativity because space time is infinitely stiff. Because space time, infinitely stiff in, in, in the limit of special relativity. Okay. And so you need general relativity where you have the coupling, you know, it's fine, but it's still too. This, this allows you to bend space time, but, but very weakly, it's too weak. So that's why I need G over C to the four, to the S, where S gets big, you know, to, that, that softened, that allows us to control the gravitational field. So yeah, so the hive mind, definitely, I mean, um, remote viewing, well, you know, you have a, <laughs> it's a remote viewing. Viewing, see, it's all tied in CIA. SRI, Hal put off. Who's the big, who's the big shmir, the big macha, the top banana in remote viewing? It's Hal put off and Russell Todd. Who's the top banana in UFO research for the government? It's Hal put off. It's the same guy. UFOs, paranormal, Pentagon, DOD. I mean, Hal put off had the highest security clear. Kit Green, who's a CIA guy, right? Kit Green told me that Hal Portoff had among the, high, the highest security clearances of anybody at one point in his career. So you have who's, so who's, who's the spokesman? Who's, who's the senior statesman, the great eminence for UFOs in the Pentagon is Hal Putoff. Who's the main guy who organized the CIA experiments when I met him in 1970, <laughs> is Hal Putoff. It's the same people on the same stage all the time. Doesn't that tell you something? You know, if you have a, any ounce of detective ability, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Okay, yeah. go ahead. All right. Do you know anything about, sorry, just to cut in, do you know anything about the, the I think it's a tabby stock. Is it, or is it, is it um, not that? Uh, it's Denmark Hill in London. Maudsley, do you know anything about that, that ooh, connection? Ooh. Mauds, the Maudsley Hospital, Denmark Hill in London, connection with Timothy Leary. Um, well, and Kale, do you know all about that? 
you, do, do you know anything about that? <laughs> no. It's a, Timothy, okay, if you, if, you, if you look on YouTube, if you look on YouTube, yeah. on my channel, look at my YouTube channel. There's okay. a video by Kim Burafato, a short video, in which she talks about a lunch that I had with Tim Leary back in the, I guess it's the 1970s, late 1970s in North Beach, San Francisco, where Tim Leary says that Jack Sarfati, to me, I'm his heir. I'm, I'm gonna carry through his space migration, intelligence increase, life extent. Yeah, I know Tim Leary very well. I stayed with Tim Leary in his Hollywood, in his Beverly Hills, you know, house back in, I, I had Tim Leary's dad at Esalen, but he got out of jail. Yeah, the whole history, I got a whole history of Tim Leary. Yeah, I know him very, I knew Tim Leary. And Tim Leary writes about me in his books and look at Robert Anton Wilson books, right? Yeah. So, but I don't know about the hospital. What is this? Is this a hospital they were doing experiments? Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got some connection with MK Ultra, I heard. Oh yeah, well, the MK, yes. Well, yes, yeah. I, I, I was part of MK, I mean, I was, Obviously, I was part of MK Ultra. I was like a subject as a kid. That's MK Ultra because one of the CIA officials who who supported my work was an MK Ultra guy. Was um, Harold Chipman? Har Har Harold? Chipman. All right, Dean. CIA. Chief of station, of station, Cold War, war, uh, Germany. He was a real, yeah, he was a real OSS Bill Donovan type. He, uh, yeah, Chipman, Chipman, Chipman ran MK Ultra, MK Ultra, in San Francisco. I guess back in the 1950s. Maybe 1950s, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Leary told me. Okay, Leary told me. Here's what uh, uh, I could tell you a lot about Tim Leary. Um, Tim Leary's father. Tim Leary was born. I'm sorry. First one. Tim Leary was born at West Point. Okay. Tim Leary's father was the uh, an army officer. Was the West Point dentist. Tim, this is directly from Tim Leary now. When I was in Beverly Hills staying at his house with my girlfriend, Jenny Stapleton at the time in the late 1970s, Tim said, his mother was a beautiful woman. I mean, Tim's a good looking guy, right? Tim says his mother had an affair with General MacArthur because MacArthur was the superintendent of West Point. This is like, you know, back in the twenties. And Tim claims to be the uh, the bastard son of General Douglas MacArthur. To me, he said this to me. Okay, yeah. Now there was a guy there. Okay, there was also a guy, an English guy. I'm glad. Okay, you're bringing back memory. There was a, an English guy had something to do with Marvel Comics. One of the creators of Marvel Comics was there. Some guy from London who claims he turned on a lot of the royal family people in the royal family on LSD. Okay. So that may have something to do with the MK altar. But, but Tim said, Tim said that, uh, see, I first actually met Tim Leary back in 1960. He was trying, I was a graduate student in physics briefly at Brandeis, and I was also then worked for the CIA contract at Miter Corporation. This is around 1960. And I somehow was, Tim Leary wanted me to be part of his first LSD experiments at Harvard around 1960, okay? I didn't, I was very straight, I didn't do it. But I was also, I was with Tim Leary and Aldous Huxley. When Aldous Huxley gave his MIT speech, Doors of Perception at MIT, okay? You know, he was there, Tim Leary brought Aldous Huxley over. I don't know if you, you know that, this is back in the early 60s, okay? And, uh, but Tim told me the reason he got into LSD because he was part of them, he was a Harvard professor at the time, and he was asked by the CIA, and it's a Frank Barron, yeah, a guy named Frank Barron, who I also knew, Frank Barron, who uh, I think actually 
Frank, I think uh, Nick Herbert actually knows Frank Barron because Frank Barron lives around. I don't know if he's still alive, but Frank Barron was in Santa Cruz, the same same place that Nick Herbert was at. And um, okay, Frank Barron. Frank, is it Frank Barron? And lists and lists Tim Leary. Leary into essentially MK Ultra. CIA. And so that's where the CIA supplied Leary with the LSD, the experiment. They want, I mean, Leary wanted me to be one of the one of the kids, the students taking the CIA, CIA LSD. I didn't do it. And but Tim took it himself. <laughs> and that changed history. The rest is history. You know. <laughs> And he became, he went rogue. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Well, Jack, let me, if it's okay, let me go to Carl Cartesian yeah. next. Sure. Uh, Carl, go ahead, sir. Thanks, Tim. <clears throat> Jack, this is, this is fascinating. Dr. Shavadi, I should say, I have a couple of questions. I, I just want to prioritize them in, the, in something that's in my level of interest. Uh, do you know if this future AI uh, uh, from the Tic Tac is still in communication with Anybody like Hal put off or somebody within the government? Well, well I don't. How would I know? Oh, I know the the question is: Are they still in communication with me? <laughs> oh, yeah, even better. Yeah, are they? Yeah. And, well, I mean, I'm not getting phone calls from them, but all I can say is that these physics ideas I start writing, it's like automatic writing. You know what I mean? Automatic writing. I just, you know, it's like I'm just watching myself write the damn thing. I'm, in other words, I'm just, I'm, I'm just the medium. <laughs> the message in the medium was, it? <laughs> who's the, yeah, who's the guy from from Canada? Uh, Marshall McLuhan. <laughs> well, the medium, it's a message. No, <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't know. So, but what could be is that I was in. Okay, now this does get interesting. Okay, I'm glad you, this. What's called EPR. Einstein EPR. Temporal, temporal signaling, which ties in a little bit with, uh, which ties in a little bit with uh, Frank, 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 we'll check, we'll check. I can't, it's a check name, we'll check. MIT, he's Nobel laureate, time crystals. Okay, <clears throat> where, here's the thing. Where, with this technology, you can implant information in the brain, okay, to, to entanglement, like entanglement of the microtubules in the brain. You can plant information and it will be triggered to go into consciousness at some time in the future. They're actually doing experiments with this atomic, you know, they're at, this is a real thing now. If you, if you, if you go, uh, if you just look on the archive and look at, uh, uh, you know, tempo, time, to, uh, uh, quantum entanglement across time, okay? So that's now- not, not neuro-linguistic programming? Well, that, that's another thing. Uh, yeah, I, this, is, this is much uh, deeper than that. Uh, they, it's like implanting a thought and then triggering it later. Yeah, but they, they're doing it physically, they're doing it in the physical fields, they're not doing it necessarily by hypnosis. Yeah, that, I mean that could be done too. I'm not I'm not discounting that. But I think what I'm I talking have, about is some is, is a different, it's a finer, you know, it's a more subtle technology. It's an electro, you know, it's a it's a physical electromagnetic technology of some kind. Okay. Why do you think Hal was so fascinated by Yuri Geller? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, well, the same reason I mean, yeah, well, because Hal, I mean, Hal is one of the guys. I mean, Hal's a contact. He, he actually told me he, he had some weird experiences about the same time I did, okay, as a kid. Hal's a little bit older. Hal's, Hal, I think, is three, three or four years older than me. And by the way, Uri Geller had his contact experience at the same time I had mine in Israel. He had his in Israel, okay. So yeah, you know, we're all connected. Every, you know, I know Uri very well. I spent, you know, I've spent time with Uri in London, you know, and here in San Francisco, and you know, so we're all connected. We're all part of the hive mind. Yeah, okay, Remy, you're right. It's a hive mind. We're all part of it. 
that just what they said, you'll begin to meet the others in 20 years and you're gonna create our technology. Now I'm having some political, you know, ego differences with uh, Eric Davis and Chris Mellon and Hal Putoff, but we're all basically, you know, we're just arguing over details and, you know, how to do it. We, we're all in the same paradigm that it's real. We all believe UFOs are real. Paranormal is real. High strangeness is real. And we're talking, we're are now arguing on, on how to dot the I's and, you know, and, and put in the periods on the details of how to get it done, the tactics. We're having tactical disagreements, but we have strategic agreements, including the military threat. Okay. Can I ask one more question, Tim? Yeah. If you don't mind, the yeah, you know, go for it, Carl. At the start, you talked about you know, you know whether or not those videos are real. You've seen it, and now you can imagine uh, a solution, and that's really inspiring, I think, to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I look at those videos, I, I immediately think of a type two superconductor that's quantum locked onto an electromagnetic magnetic field. Yeah, and yeah. I like, operate freely orientated, move yes, yes. laterally and vertically. And yeah, I yeah. just see this absolute parallel. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Because here's the one thing. Uh, here, look, here's a tic tac. Okay, it's the metamaterial, metamaterial surface, meta, meta, I'll call it meta surface. And I, I've been picturing, it's surrounded, the, okay, let me do. Okay. And then it also is like, oh, okay. Well, just imagine it's all it's all filled Great, in. Yeah. That these are quantized, quantized magnetic vortex rings, rings. Okay, where mu is going to zero, so they're also creating gravity. So and, and it's converting the B field into the gravitational field, the gravity field inside here. And this is, this kind of popped into my mind. It, you know, this is like in type two superconductivity, in type two, you know, uh, you have these, mm -hmm. you know, these are the Abrikosov, Abrikosov uh, lattice. Okay, so I'm thinking this is that this something like this is the, the way they control it. You know, you're, 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 cha you're, you're controlling every, every, uh, vortex ring here, controlling the magnetic field and you're controlling the phase, you can have an anti-gravity. Okay, you can have, you can have, well, maybe some, you can have these rings here, they could have cosine of theta negative. So, oh, I should have, in fact, I should have just used, wait, let me, let me just change the color. Let me, let me change the color. And I'll change the color. Uh, the, you can have these here, you can have the cosine, the cosine is negative, so that's anti-gravity. And here the cosine, here the cosine is, uh, cosine, cosine theta is positive, that's gravity. So that's your warp drive, that's the anti very warp drive. You think it's going, see, the space here is contracting, the space is expanding, and here you're gonna have a, uh, here you're gonna have a red shift, a gra this is a gravity red shift. Redshift. That's gravity blue ship. If if the UFO is uh, if the UFO is see, I'm getting all these details and these assholes, Luis Elizondo, these guys, they're not they're not engaging me on this to try to figure it out. They're not being constructive. Just, this is absolutely amazing. I just please yeah. continue. This is yeah this yeah is yeah. So you can have um, this is Skinwalker Ranch. I don't know what happened here. Skinwalk Ranch. They're seeing this orb here, or something. And here's the here's here's uh here's uh Travis. Travis claims he got Travis Taylor. Taylor, I don't know. Travis Taylor claims he got sick. That's sick. It's hovering because this is all um this is um uh this is the uh, you know the anti gravity. So it's ionized, you know, the anti-gravity blue shift, 
Uh, why is it doing this? You know, it, it's, it's, it's getting him sick from radiation. Okay, when the thing hovers, it's got to have, it's got to have, uh, you know, the vortex rings that are creating anti-gravity here to keep, that's the lift, that's the anti-gravity lift, okay? In order to keep it, in order to keep it at a fixed distance in the Earth's gravitational field. So, um, okay, so what were you asking? Go back. Yeah, so I think, I think this, uh, type, when you said type two superconductivity, it's funny because I've been thinking type two superconductors are, are going to play a role. Well, the analog, they're not, it's yeah. going to be, it's, you don't need cryogenics. You don't need low temperature. It's going to be the Froelich room temperature condensate analog to type two superconductivity. Everything you could do with low temperature cryogenic superconductors and thermodynamic equilibrium, you can do at high temperature and room temperature using pumped Froelich condensates. Okay. That, uh, that's what, and that's why I think, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because you want, you, you definitely want, you know, you can get diamagnetic Froelich condensates at high temperature, non equilibrium. And with the, with Wands's formula, is when you get small, the gravitational amplification effect gets bigger because, you know, because it's one over mu squared in the denominator. And even the stressed energy tends to electromagnetic field also has mu's in the denominator. So it gets even more amplified. Okay. No, so I, I, to go back to the original question, it was yeah. about type two superconductors. The reason why I, I've been thinking about it is I've seen videos of, of a super cool type two superconductor, yeah. you know, operating free of gravity effectively that can, that's quantum lock that can operate and, and, and move at any yeah. orientation. Okay. That, that's just, that's just, that's just magnetic levitation. It's not what we're talking. It, it looks like it, but it's not. It looks like that. that. And that's why it's, a, it's an analogy. And that's why I kept on thinking yeah. that. Yeah, I'm it talking, it's, it's, yeah, that, that's not actually changing the gravitational field. Uh, and that was my next question, which is, have we any evidence that UAP are actually uh, creating gravitational lensing or, or working yeah. gravity? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. It's all over. Now, okay, now this is, there was this guy, there's this guy, uh, I, let, me, let me change this. Let yeah, me. and I, you know, I can try and find that video. Um, there's there's a, a Puerto Rico video, and, and that's I think that's the one Jack wants to talk about. No, I'm I'm talking. Why is this doing this? It's yeah, it's interesting. But it's it's on thermal that we see the distortion. Okay, okay, Have yeah, no, 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 okay. There's a guy named. There's a he had a website UAP theory. Whoops. Yes. Wait, there's this guy, okay? Now I got it. This is an interesting story. There's no, this, this is guy, great. This is guy his theory. Dot com. This guy, I forget his his, his first name, uh, and I'm not sure if I ever knew his last name. So I think that Tim, you know who he is, right? I think Tim knows who he is. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, um, and he he just felt what he had told me was he took the UAP theory website offline. I have a copy of that. I think I sent you a copy of that. Yeah. He, he had said he felt afraid of being doxxed. He, he didn't specify by who, which apparently okay. is where. Oh, so see, this is the, this is the, the this is the uh, political and the, uh, the dark. This is the uh, black ops stuff. Okay. Now look, let me explain what this guy did. This guy is, I think he's got a mass. He's not a PhD physicist like I am. He has a master's, I think, in astrophysics and geology or something like that. He's a smart guy, okay? Young man, I guess. Smart guy. And he also did forensic analysis exactly. He doesn't know any theory, really, okay? He did He did what Paul Hill did. He took, and he did a brilliant analysis because he does know gravitational lens. He does know some general relativity. He made very detailed photographic. He knows how to do photographic analysis, all that stuff. That, yeah. And he made a convincing case. Number one, it's warp drive. Definitely it's warp drive it's for the same reasons I said. Independent, I never met this guy. Totally independent. And he also shows from the photographs that there's gravitational lensing there, which I independently also said there's gotta be gravitation. All the shape shifting. And when they see like the lights, they see like one light and then the light becomes like four lights. That's standard gravity. That's just like what happens yeah. in the gravitational lensing of stars. You, you know, multiple images from the from the yeah. So there, there's 
a lot of evidence for gravitational lensing. And whether he was told to shut up by the Defense Department or something that's too close to who knows, but it's very suspicious that he went offline because everything he said was confirming my stuff. But he didn't, he said, Oh, it's we don't know it's quantum gravity. And he just bullshit around about the he didn't know about metamaterial. He never mentioned the metamaterial. He never mentioned anything I talk about. He said, Oh, it's got we won't know how it works until it's it's quantum gravity. It's you know, ER equals EPR, you know, a lot of bull he hand waved, but his evidence. And the way he analyzed the evidence, the empirics were perfect and in total uh, corroboration of everything I've been saying. Uh, I think it was intelligent, intelligent I, commentary. I, I just uploaded, I had a zip file for this. So I just uploaded this into chat. So you, you can download that. Anybody in the conference can download that right from chat. And that's just an archive of his full website with all of the, the, the images and all of that. Okay, any more, any more questions? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Carl. Um, let me let me go back to let, let me go to adept uh, monatomic alchemist, sir. I think it's is it. I think it's a woman, isn't it? No, no, I, I, oh, I believe. Definitely not. Definitely not. Oh, is that what? Oh, hi, hi, Bernie. Guy with long hair. <laughs> yep, just, just a hippie with long hair. Don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just. Wondering uh, your opinion on Walter Russell's work, specifically the cold fusion uh, reactions he claims to have um, produced okay. in vacuum tubes. Uh, you know, I never heard of the guy. Uh, I don't discount cold fusion. The guy you're going to talk to is Brian Josephson, Nobel Prize physicist, Josephson effect, who follows the cold fusion. Um, I have nothing against cold fusion. I'm not following it. And but it, but I'll tell you what cold fusion would be good for. Cold fusion would be good if there was a cold fusion battery to power my metamaterials, you know, as a power source, as a battery. A cold fusion battery that might be very so nice. So I might be able to help you with that and send you a bunch of material that I'm making through uh, electrolysis cold fusion, and it's based off uh, my research is based off of Isaac Newton's alchemy writings and then i don't know if you've heard of uh keshi mehran keshi the iranian but uh he also goes into these monoatomic plasmoids I heard and uh it's yeah i don't know but you know what i i'm so um involved and i'm so far behind in reading papers that are directly relevant to what i'm doing that I don't have time for the cold fusion. I'm not saying, but Brian Josephson might. Okay, yeah. nobody so just say if you want, send it to me. I'll pass it on to him. And I, there may be a few other people I know. Well, sure. yeah. Let me go back to Jeremy. Let, let me go back to Jeremy Reese. Then Ber Bernie, thank you again, sir. Let me go back to Jeremy, and then. Okay, uh, Jeremy, sir. Hey, sorry. I'll I'll lower my hand. I I don't ha I don't ha I didn't have a question. I forgot to lower the hand. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry about that. But um, I, I do think we should get uh, Jack on um some of these right wing political. Uh, I've have, I've have connections with Tim Pool. I'm gonna see if he can get you on because it, it's unfair that these other guys get all this coverage and and you don't. Um, so I'm gonna. One of the I'm gonna reasons, let me tell you. Well, okay, let me tell you one of the reasons. One of the reasons I was getting along pretty well with Christopher Mellon. In fact, you know, by text and stuff like that. And Christopher Mellon, he was going on Tucker Carlson, one of the shows, and he asked me a question about um, black holes. You know, he doesn't, I mean, Chris doesn't know anything about physics. I mean, really nothing. I mean, but, you know, he's totally confused with black holes. So, okay, so I, 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 I set him straight a little bit on that question right before he went on some, some television show. Somehow, at some later point in email, he mentioned something, this was during the election, the Trump election, and he said something about Trump, which I didn't like. I was actually a Trump supporter, I admit it. And, uh, and he's, a, you know, obviously, a, you know, he's a Democrat, he's a progressive guy. So that's what caused a falling out. So then, so then Chris Mellon started sending, you know, like uh, automatic replies saying, you know, I'm an asshole. Like, I mean, he took it, uh, I mean, here's this guy, he's a Mellon, he's, he's, he's 20 years younger than me, you know, he's the top of his game. And he took offense. He, he got emotionally involved over a political dispute involving Donald Trump. So that's 
that's that's part of what's going on here now. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, okay. Sir. And let, let me see. So let me ask who who else has. Let me let me see who else has questions. Um, it, I'm just scrolling through the chat here. And Jack, I want to thank you again for joining us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get back. Sorry, Tim. Um, Mark Florentino had a question. Do you want to jump in, Mark? Mark? Yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark, would you like? Uh, I have a lot of questions, actually, but I, yeah. I missed the front. Unfortunately, I missed the front part of the video. The first couple, two and a half hours. Ah, so, okay. So um, well, it's, well, you know, I, I, what I'd like to know, I guess, basically, is that you mentioned something back here, and I asked a question about what, it, what the ring, the uh, ring was made of at the bottom of the craft that you were showing a, a drawing of. The vortex ring. What is that oh, yeah. made of exactly? What what is the construction? Well, that's what we've got to it, it, It's a what, what we we want to have is a. Wait a minute, let's see, let's get my back here now. Hold on. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me get into my. Uh, I don't know why it's doing. Uh, you're talking about. You talking about this picture? Yeah. And let me just do it again. I don't know why it's so thick. Uh, let's see. Let me do it. Change it. Let me are those it. superconducting magnetic coils? No, those are going to be. Uh, wait, I'll, I'll explain in a minute. This will, and this will be. Um, this will be. This will be gravity. This here will be uh, cosine. This is in the equations. Cosine theta is greater than zero. And this is going to be. Uh, cosine greater than zero, and this is going to be anti gravity. So I sorry. For, okay, so this is this is warp drive. This is a. a uh, You're on a number eight pen if you want to know why the uh, the writing's so thick. Yeah, it's why so is it? You're on a number eight. Oh, you saw that there's a number thing? I, I don't know how to control. Okay, where'd you see that? Ah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, got it. Okay, next one will be better. So, no, these are what these are, these are going to be. Um, these are, these are, yeah, okay, quantized. Nice magnetic, magnetic uh, vortex vortices, vortex rings. They're, they're, they're vortex rings, you know. They're they're um and you're calling them vortex rings because the magnetic field is creating yeah, the mag yeah, the a magnetic field, the of magnetic, space. There's a magnetic field in here. There's a magnetic field, right? And that magnetic field, there's a there's a um Inside, let's see the magnetic field. There's going to be a there's going to be a mu, and the mu is going to be going to zero. The mu is very small, but the s field, the s field, the amplification effect, the s field goes as one over what goes as mu zero, mu zero over mu um, squared, and then there's a and then there's going to be a t zero. There's going to be a b squared over mu again. There, okay. So, yeah. it, type two superconductor. Yeah, this is like the, like a type two super type two superconductor. That's correct. That's what I would expect it to be, and I would also expect mu to go what? to zero. To what? And I also expect mu to go to zero. I believe that is. Yeah, yeah, like we're going to zero. Okay, but now here's the his equation. Einstein's equation. In this case, I got to let me do it right. I'm going to just do the Newtonian limit, the weak field limit. It's del squared. It's del squared because there's, there's a one over c squared here, and there's a one over c to the fourth there. So 
uh, what it is, it turns out it's del squared. This is Newtonian potential. Del squared phi is going to be something like four pi g uh, over c squared. And I'm going to have the square root of s times b squared. Uh, what's going on? Come on. Well, I don't know why it sometimes does that. B squared over mu. So this this is going to go. So what I'm going to have it's going to go as um, it's going to go as um, as um, it's going to go as 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 uh, mu zero over mu squared. The amplification. Let's go as mu squared. I'm going to an amplification factor that's in the square of mu. So as mu goes to zero, you know this. In other words, the coupling, the coupling, the coupling strength, the coupling. Let me no, let me do it here. The coupling of magnetic field field to gravity is going to scale as one over mu squared. So as as mu goes to zero, you know we get a we're amplifying. The coupling of, of the magnetic field to, to the gravity field it's making. Okay, that's roughly in this model. Uh, I don't know if I agree with the last statement, but I, I, well, I hear that's, that's you are on that. to something. I, I will say that. Yeah, well, this is very this is, much similar to, to what's your drawings are very much similar to what's in my book. And I'm just very, very curious. Okay, about, have you had had you have you had any ET any paranormal high strangeness experience? I have had. I'm writing another book to explain all the paranormal. Okay, yes, so you're, I you're have a, a lot of those, but okay. it's so many I could fill a book. How how old are you now? Uh, I was when they started. I was twenty. Uh, but it's a long, involved story. Yeah, but how, how okay, long. how old are you now? How, how many years ago? What, what 66. And 66. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, I'm an old timer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of truth. You're so close on so many things that's giving me chills. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, because it's agreeing a lot with the theory of super relativity. There is some nuances that we might okay, not just, agree just on. Remember, I'm only using, I don't, I'm only using Einstein. Einstein, I'm only using very elementary physics, 1916. Just like me. Gio, okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, we, we agree there too. I, I, I use even more elementary. I use what, in. Uh, I have a paper where I unified gravity to electromagnetism and uh, also we're, we're on the origin of mass, gravity, and inertia. Okay. They all come from the same thing. But okay. that's well, another I, subject. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm not doing anything like that. I just wanna, I just wanna make it clear the difference between what I do and what you do. What I do- well, I like that you're using Einstein. He, okay. I'm also using Maxwell. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> okay, Maxwell, yeah. What Einstein, what, okay, so now what, what Einstein, I use Einstein, Maxwell, Einstein, okay. all Lorenz. I'm doing is this. All I'm doing is this. All I'm doing is this. I'm just saying the, the gravity field, Jimmy, you know, the Einstein tensor is going to be equal to 8 pi g over c to the 4 times this s field times the t mu nu for the em field. This is the em, EM field. So Einstein's equation automatically in a special case, shows how the electromagnetic field is transformed into the gravitational field and vice versa. By the way, it'll go two ways. We can use it for gravity, gravity wave detection too. This equation is very similar to something I was given. Okay, what do you mean? Well, this is Einstein's equation, except with yeah, the X. Well, I would love to say more here, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. uh, okay. so, this so, is okay. amazing. Okay, okay let, let, me, let me just say this. Let me just get the hit so people who are watching. Einstein, 1916. 1916. Let me just say, let me try to. 
this is, I wish Nick Herbert was still here because Nick Herbert, you know, was making a phony argument that I, that I was saying I'm not using conventional physics. I am using conventional. Uh, 1916 is g mu nu equals eight pi g with the c to the fourth t mu nu. In particular, if this is an EM field, this is the, you know, EM creates gravity. This is gravity. And by the way, in, in, in most practical applications, matter, even when you put in matter, it, the electromagnetic field is the dominant field, long range, right? The, yes. the, 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 the weak force and nuclear force don't do much. Okay. No, they're yes. interactions mainly. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're there, but they're, 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 they're second, secondary effects. Secondary, exactly. Okay, now, this is Einstein. Sarfati. Wanzer, 2020, is basically 8 pi g c to the fourth s. Oops, it goes into that automatically. This weird. I oh, you know when you press, if I press down too hard, it changes the thickness. That's what it is. That's what I've been doing. Getting two of these. So that this is all. This is let me. This is a. I, I, I should use the Superman symbol. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then after this, actually, I, I had a quick question as well, right. Jack. Okay, that's all we do. So that's why I say we're doing minimal, we're only using elementary mainstream physics. This is our only chain, putting this in, and before which we have good reasons. Both We have sound reasons, both experimental and theoretical, for making this move. It's like a chess game, right? We've just made a new... A gambit that we just changed the strategy in doing a chess game, and we've done this is the, this is the Sarfati ones a gambit in this, in this <laughs> chess game, okay? So that's it. That's everything comes from there. That's all we yeah. have to do to explain everything. We explain everything that the Navy is seeing, and we plus weapons plus weapons applications. That's what I'm saying. It's elementary mainstream physics, not mysterious. Yeah. Okay, well, Mark, thank you. Thank you again, sir. Um, so Jack, if I could ask you to elaborate briefly, you mentioned something probably about an hour, uh, probably an hour and a half ago. And it, to me, it, there's, I, I can feel kind of a paradigm shift, but you, so you had mentioned that these devices would, would allow a warp drive, obviously, yeah. but there would also be some kind of a, I think you were describing as like a Stargate, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the same device. I mean, what, what kind of capabilities do you think that might provide for UAPs? Well, but the, the, every, any, <laughs> a lot of capabilities. <laughs> uh, okay, Q in Star Trek. Remember, anybody know, everybody remember Q in Star Trek? That's the capability. Well, look, if you control the gravitational field with small amounts of energy, control, control of gravity. Oh, and William Schramm actually just also asked if UAPs can travel through solids, but I, I think that's- oh, That's okay, that, that's what, that gets back, can you, that's that first slide, five yeah. examples. That's the slide that Louis Elizondo, Harold put off, always use, okay? That's the slide that, and there were five points, right? I said I could explain points one. Four, yeah. One, two, yeah, four of the five. The one I'm not sure of is travel through solid matter. And for that, they got to talk to, I mean, I'm not discounting it, but that's how put off shtick. Let him, let him deal with that. Okay, I'm, uh, explaining four of the five is good enough for me, <laughs> okay? Okay, so, but look, but getting back to the original, look, control of gravity with small amounts of energy, it's time travel, one thing. And that's, you know, they said they came back from the future. Time travel with small amounts of energy. We're talking about time travel technology. Now, there's enough science fiction stuff about what happens to time travel, okay? Then you have, you know, there are no paradoxes because there's what's called global... Novakov loops. 
Well, so one of the things I, I spoke with an Air Force person, this was probably a couple of months ago now at this point. Yeah. And, and one of the things that he had questioned, and when you mentioned the Stargate, it brought this to mind. He'd said, you know, what if, what if these vehicles, what if UAPs just, he said, we're think, we've been thinking of them in terms of vehicles like an aircraft. But he said, what if we thought of these almost like a cursor in three space, right? Like, you know, the cursor on your Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, the, the hologram universe. Is the universe, uh, yeah, uh, a simul? Are we living in a simulation? That's all that stuff, right? The thing is this with metric engineering physics, in the physical sense I am talking about, is functionally speaking indistinguishable from uh, a digital you know, simulated universe. And that has to do with EPR, ER. This is you know, this is this is qubits. Bits. Mm, okay. They're, they're two different. They're, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. A anything? Yes. It's as though it's as though we're living in a in a computer game in a video game. Yeah. With metric engine, it, functionally speaking, it, 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 they're equivalent. They're just two different ways of describing it. So, and this is uh, you know, it's Lenny Susskind. Susskind. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so the answer, tell, tell him, hey, you should tell this guy, get in touch with me. Tell him the answer to that is yes. Both of them, they're, they're, they're two different, they're, they're dual descriptions. They're complementary, well, like quantum mechanics, complementary descriptions of the same reality. Once you can control gravity like that with small amounts of energy, including maybe your mind. See, one of the things Hal Potter wanted to do with the mind, you know, the levitating monk in Italy. Mm -hmm. Nick Herbert's into that too. Um, so the answer is yes. That you know, that also accounts for the high strangers. The the paranormal high strangers dimension to this whole scenario, to my whole world line, my 70 years or more in this quest, in this field, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I uh... Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I know when you describe high strangeness, you, you mean many different things, but yeah, yeah. do you think, do you think like, like when I think of that, I'm thinking synchronicities as that's, being, that's part of it. That's okay. Part. Yeah. yeah. But synchronicity can all be explained as the manipulation of the present from future, you know, higher intelligence, you know, like Arthur C. Clarke, right? Uh, an advanced intelligence appears like magic to a, you know, primitive, primitive person. Yeah, no, it, it is interesting. It, yeah. So, uh, well, let, let me do, I, I mean, I think we're almost at the top of the hour. So I should probably do one more call for uh, questions and see if anybody else. Uh, oh, I, I think Mark had another one. Okay, so let, let's do Mark and uh, Mark, go for it, sir. Um, oh, that, sorry, that was, Ber oh, sorry. Well, yeah, go ahead, Mark. It was actually Bernie that raised his hand, but no, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just making a comment about the Stargate technology, which I put into the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The star. Okay. So, uh, Matt Visser. Okay. The place to look. Look at Matt Visser. Matt Visser uh, archive. You know, ePrint archive. Uh, he took a traversable. Traversable. Wormholes, wormholes, holes with the what's called exponential metric. Metric. And then he also has papers on warp drive and uh, tractor beams, beam weapons, tractor beam. Weapon. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't use the word weapons, but he has a picture that has like a weapon. So, uh, all these three, Matt Visser is into all three of these applications of the same. G mu min is eight pi, g of the c to the four. He doesn't have the s. T mu nu. Yeah, he doesn't have my he, without the s. So, he, so for him to do what he wants to do would not be possible practically because it required too much energy. I've solved the energy problem, okay? But he has all the applications. All these are 
you have a basic equation, law of nature, and with different applications. You know, you have like Maxwell's equations, they describe, uh, you know, electrical circuits, they describe antennas, radar, they describe all kinds of things, all different applications, right, of the same laws of nature. So yeah. what I'm claiming is that the whole UAP, UFO technology is very simple in principle. Um, let me go to Bernie for one last question. I think we'll probably wrap it up after that. Uh, Bernie, do you want to go, sir? Um, so my question is, do you see a correlation with all the ancient metaphysics and the development of our conscious understanding of uh, technology now um, connecting to the ancient knowledge of metaphysics? Uh, it depends what you mean, but yeah. You know, uh, what uh, I think is this, okay, what I think is this, Garden of Eden, Eden, Eden is uh, time travel, time travelers uh, from you know, uh, genetic engineering. engineering uh, primitive primitive humans to us roughly what 6,000 years ago or maybe a little more I don't know something like that abrupt changes right abrupt change in other words uh, uh, you know a, an abrupt change in evolution time right this is interference from the future I mean, the, the, the language, language suddenly, language appears suddenly. Oh, language. You know, all that stuff, you know. That, I mean, there's no written language. And we're only like, what, 6,000 years old? Roughly speaking? I mean, you know, uh, recorded the use of language and writing and stuff like that. It's like that, right? And I'm claiming that was an abrupt thing. That's evidence of, for, um, of um, time travel. Also, you know, the Upanishads, I mean, the Ezekiel, you know, Ezekiel's vision, all the, the Star Wars stuff in the Upanishads or the, the Hindu stuff, there's all kinds of evidence. I mean, the sky gods, you know, even <laughs> the, uh, uh, by the way, Muhammad, Muhammad was taken up into a, a UFO, right? It's, it's in the Quran as well. I mean, all kinds, and the star Bethlehem, what's the star Bethlehem? It's a UFO, right? You know, it's a primitive minds. So yeah, we are, there is ample evidence reinterpreting history, ample evidence in the literature, in the art forms, you know, the pictures of UFOs. I mean, we all know. So the answer is it's pretty obvious. People have been denying what's obvious. We are genetically engineered by the same tic-tac intelligence that contacted me in 1953. They were here 6,000 years ago. We're being genetically engineered. You know, it's all time travel. Okay. Wonderful. Well, Jack, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I know that's that's my fault. I changed the settings. I, I've had people zoom bombing us, I think. So so let, let me let me do this. This has been an amazing four hours. Um, I, I'm going to put so let me let me stop sharing real quick. Um, OK, yeah, sorry about that. We have an enormous conference here. Let me put this on gallery view. And, and again, everyone, please give Dr. Jack Sarfati an enormous hand.